Hey, welcome to church today. Welcome everyone. We're so glad you're here. Man, we have so much in store for you. We have fun because God gives us joy. Yes, he gives us joy. That's a great thing. Yeah, and we get to show that joy in worship. Yep. So we're going to do worship right now. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's worship. All right, everybody, let's worship God. Breaking through the dark in my life as you shine your light me, shining like the sun. job you guys all right we have another song of worship let's go ahead and increase that energy and let's get those legs moving all right we're gonna clap up and forward here we go
to save you, to work for you. He loves you so much. So let's worship God because he is love and he first loved us. Come on, sing, you are powerful. Come on. 
close our eyes. We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are powerful. You're in control, God, and you love us. So we don't have to worry about anything, but all we need is you, Jesus. So please be with us today. Come into our lives and be our best friend. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hey, everyone. It's time for the memory verse. So get up on your feet. This first time, I'll say it and you watch. The second time, I'll say it and you repeat after me. And the third time, we'll all say it together. If you're ready, put your thinking cap on. All right, this first time, I'll say it and you watch. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4, 8. Okay, everyone, this time you're going to repeat after me. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4, 8. Great job, you guys. All right. That's good. Man, that passage we just talked about was pretty straightforward about, you know, striving to do good for others. I can get so caught up in my own thoughts about what I believe should be done, but I need to match my thoughts with God's thoughts. Dude, that's awesome. You've already learned so much. See, the world tells us that we need to get back at people or get even, mm. but God clearly tells us so many times in the Bible that that's not the answer. Mm. We read one example, but another one could be found in Leviticus 19.18. Jay, you want to read it for us today? Sure, bro. All right. All right, Leviticus 19.18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You know, that verse is really clear that we should always love people and never pay back evil for evil. We need to be obedient to God and do what Jesus would do in that moment. That's right. And that's where our main point is even when I feel hurt, I can still love like Jesus. You see, God is love, and he wants us to always show love to people, no matter the circumstance. Yeah, man, but that can be really tough. I'm not going to lie. It can be really hard. But I actually wanted to show you a great example of this in the Bible with King David. He was faced with a situation where it probably would have been easier to be mad and repay evil with evil. But instead, he chose to do what is right, and he showed love. Let's check it out. The story begins in the land of Israel as we look into the life of David. David was a shepherd boy, and although he was the youngest of four sons in his family, he was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel. 
But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true. And in the meantime, he was watching over his sheep and goats. He had to be patient because at that time there was another king on the throne of Israel. His name was Saul. Saul was strong and tall and looked like everything a king should be. But God doesn't look at our outward appearance. Instead, he focuses on our hearts. And ultimately, Saul was disobedient and did not follow God like he was supposed to. And for that reason, God chose to take the kingdom from his family and give it to David. After some time, David was sent to Saul to serve him. Saul loved him so much, and David was appointed his armor bearer. David became a great warrior, and after defeating Goliath the giant, Saul named him the commander of his armies, and David became successful in everything he did. Everyone in the kingdom loved David, but this started to make Saul jealous and angry at David because he was afraid of him and thought he would try to kill him and take the throne away from his family. So Saul wanted to kill David, but the Lord was with David and he kept him safe. David fled and escaped to multiple places after he was warned about King Saul's intentions. Saul kept trying to find ways to get rid of David and he hunted him, but Saul wasn't able to catch him. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. Moving from place to place, about 600 men started following David wherever he went. One day, Saul was told that David was in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul chose 3,000 elite soldiers, the best he could find in all Israel, and set out in search of David near the region of the wild goat rocks. During Saul's search for David, he went into the cave to take a break. Well, this very cave was the one where David and his men were hiding. And when David's men saw that Saul was unaware that David was there and unable to defend himself, they whispered, Now's your opportunity. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of Saul's robe. Immediately he felt guilty and David began to think that it was not right for him to harm Saul's life, even after all the trouble and all the hardship he has caused him. It was so easy for David to put an end to all of this, but he realized that no matter what Saul has done, it was still not right for him to hurt the one who God had chosen as king over Israel. So David ordered his men to step away, and he did not let them harm King Saul. Saul got up, left the cave, and went down to the road. David came out and shouted after Saul, My Lord, the King! When Saul looked behind him, he saw that David bowed down with his face to the ground. Why do you listen to the people who say I'm trying to harm you? This very day, you can see with your own eyes this isn't true. Some of my men told me to kill you, but I spared you. I cut off a piece of your robe, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you've been hunting for me to kill me. Then David went on to promise that he would never harm Saul. David said that God would be the one to protect David and to rescue him from Saul's power. Saul said, is that really you, my son David? And he began to cry. And he said to David, you are a better man than I am, for you have repaid me good for evil. Yes, you have been amazingly kind to me, for when the Lord put me in a place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would let his enemies get away when he had him in his power? May the Lord reward you for the kindness you have shown me today. And now I realize that you are surely going to be king and that the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. Now swear to me by the Lord that when that happens, you will not kill my family. So David promised that he would not hurt Saul's family, and they left each other in peace. Now Saul continued to cause difficulty in David's life, but David kept his promise, and in time, David did become king of Israel. David was dearly loved by God, and Israel did flourish under his rule, because David did everything that God wanted him to do, and he was a man after God's own heart. a lot during that video. Yeah, I did too. I know it's gonna be hard, 
But Jesus asked me to show love to people. And I love my sister. I don't want to be mean to her. So I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to respond in love, even though she hurt my feeling. Yeah, well, remember the story of David and Saul. I do. Yeah, Saul was in the cave, and David yeah. had his moment to get back at Saul. But even though he was hurting, he chose to respond with love and not hurt him and honor him. That is really hard. It was really hard, but I want to be like David. David yeah. was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had such a great time learning with you guys. After this video, there's going to be a prayer card on the screen. And we really want you to pray this with your family and whoever's around you. Because we need God's help to love people even when we're hurt. Yeah, that's right. And also, we want to give you guys an opportunity to ask Jesus into your heart. So Maybe important. you've never done that before. Well, today can be your day. So be sure to pray that prayer today. And if you do, make sure you tell your parents. We're so glad that you yeah. joined us today. And we cannot wait to see you next time. Bye, Bye. guys.